Hello and welcome to another episode of Husker Dive. Um, I am Nate, as usual, uh, here with Sadie today, all the way from the Dominican Republic. And then Cecilia Aussie. Did I say there's an OC or did Aussie. I say it right? Aussie. You got it right. Um, from Nebraska's rifle team. So that's a new sport for us. So uh, thank you for coming on. How are you doing? Good. Hello. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm, I'm super excited, actually. This is my first podcast um, that I've been asked to do. And I think it's awesome because our sport is not really recognized that much and not a lot of people actually even know about it. So um, I always love educating people about it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'm from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Nebraska is a long way for me. I'm from a small town in New Jersey and I grew up here. And for most of my high school career, I did gymnastics. So I really didn't get into shooting until the end of my junior year. And um, it was it was just a race to uh to to get to that goal of becoming a college athlete mm -hmm. which for me was really huge um part of of my high school and when I um broke my back in gymnastics oh that no longer was a possibility for me so I had to switch gears very quickly um and the timing of everything and the people that I met was amazing because they really helped me to accelerate very quickly in the sport and I was able to um begin being recruited my senior year um, and make the cut for um, quite a few schools um, recruited me and made me offers, which to me was surprising because I had just started. Um, and Nebraska really stood out to me because of how much resources they have there and their athletic department and their real passion behind athletics and creating good people and what they had to offer me as a student, a person, and an athlete, not just as an athlete. Um, and then the coaching staff there um, for the rifle team is amazing. Um, both the coaches are high-level athletes themselves. And so I was really looking for that athlete um, on athlete mentorship uh, that I knew I could find there um, because I still don't know a lot about the sport. And I'm always learning, and I'm not as seasoned as some of the other athletes that come into college. So I really wanted to be able to continue to grow and progress in the sport past an NCAA standpoint um, and try and make national team and, you know, world team and so forth. Uh, so that was a really big thing for me coming in two years ago. I am now going into my junior year. So been shooting for about three years and yeah, it's been a crazy experience so far. Um, but a little bit about me, moving to Lincoln was a huge change for me. Um, I'm from the country, um, which sounds counterintuitive coming from New Jersey, <laughs> Yeah. but I'm pretty much in Pennsylvania. So I'm on the Northwestern side. Um, okay. yeah. So living in a, in a city town is not something I'm used to. So that was a big adjustment. Um, and overall, just the atmosphere of being in a college town. Um, here I have actually five siblings. And we're all in sports. And fun fact, two of them are now going to school in Nebraska as well. Okay. So I started a trend. <laughs> um, and yeah, so we're all really close. We have ducks and chickens and we have a couple border collies and a cat. So wow. we got a little mini farm going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I just love anything outdoors, hunting, fishing, hiking. Um, so I'm still on the look for the outlets to do all of that in Lincoln, which is a little more challenging than it is here. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so that's a little bit about me. Um, my major right now is finance. I actually want to become a commercial pilot. Oh. My mom is a pilot. So that's my professional career goal, although it didn't really line up with the school that I got recruited to and wanted <laughs> to go to. So I'm currently working on um, my pilot training on the side during the summer and in the hopes of continuing that after college and pursuing a job as a pilot. Um, yeah, so. Wow, that that's, a, that's crazy. So you got... So you moved from New Jersey to Lincoln and you broke your back in high school from gymnastics, which you were pursuing. So then junior year, you switched to rifle. First of all, how did you, 
like what made you spark up the idea of going to rifle shooting for a sport? Yeah, so I I was heavily involved in 4-H in my high school. What's that? Um, 4-H is, it's pretty big in Nebraska and all over the country, actually. Um, So it's a lot of leadership, a lot of community service, but then we have all our different project areas. And I had been involved in a shooting sports project group. Mm. So I had been exposed to different um, disciplines in shooting, muzzleloader, shotgun, pistol, all different kinds of disciplines. Um, more recreational. And I had been to Nebraska because the national competition is held there. Mm. So I kind of had had that in the back of my mind. And it was actually a coincidence that one of my teammate's sisters had started shooting rifle and actually had just signed with West Virginia to Mm. shoot on their team. So I kind of hopped on her train and was like, who are your coaches? Where are you shooting? Um, And kind of just was able to get in with her and follow you know the steps that she had taken which was super helpful um because she's obviously a very good shooter Mm -hmm. and um west virginia has been one of the top schools um is always one of the top schools for shooting so i really looked up to her um when i first started and even now yeah for sure what does what is like so how did you get from junior year starting shooting and then I saw that you were second team all-american and played in or like I competed in the national championship how do you get from junior year of high school to playing in the national championship in like three years or four years I mean I got to give all the glory to God um faith is like a huge part of my my journey and he is just bless me in like all the ways, all the coaching, all of the opportunities, all the doors that have just opened, I feel like. Um, Cause yeah, it's been a sh- such a short amount of time. Um, all my high school coaches, um, I just had amazing coaches. They really, everybody encouraged me, my family um, and really just let me know that it was possible. Cause I didn't even know what was possible really. Um, but especially after coming to college, Um, I did have some coaching changes the first year, which were difficult to deal with, but our team um, made it to NCAAs the first year that I was here. And I was fortunate enough to travel on that team and count for NCAAs. Um, And then this this year as well, um, I had a very good performance all year, and I also was able to make it as an individual, although our team did not go. Um, And both years very different experiences um but overall i think coming here and having the support from the coaches and also the support from all my teammates was a very different environment and it kind of really pushed me to continue becoming a better shooter and seeing what was possible because i really looked up to some of the older girls on our team and then also the competition and the people that i was shooting against i realized you know how good people are and what i can learn from that Um, So I really enjoy watching other people shoot um, at the matches that we go to um, because I can learn so much from that. Again, being so new to this, I'm constantly picking up things and, you know, just learning from every, every experience and every match. That was a huge part of my growth. I think even after coming here from high school. Yeah. Um, So you talked about like going to the national championship, everything being all American. One other award that I saw that you got was the um, Sam Fultz Hero 27 Leadership Award, which I think we all know about Sam Fultz and everything, but what what does that award mean and what did it mean to you to receive it? Receiving that award um, as a sophomore, I think that was a huge, huge honor to me. Um, And all the community service that we do here is kind of built off of the work that I did in high school, because I mentioned that I was in 4-H. So through that, I did a lot of leadership, a lot of community service, and I really enjoy giving back to the community around me and kind of inspiring those around me. So being able to do that here at Nebraska, where there's an even larger, like our fan base is crazy. Um, that just, I love doing that. I love going to the schools and talking to kids. That was my favorite part of the year. Um, I've gone to many schools with groups of people and just talk to kids and answered questions. And I just think that inspiring and like showing people what's possible, no matter what path you take, 
um, is really a beautiful thing and trying to be able to give back to our community and all the support that we have. Um, and that award, it just, I wanted to show not only my team and those around me that um, this work that we're doing is important but also kind of just bring that out to a larger scale and show everybody that we're more than athletes and that we are making a difference in our communities and we're doing these things not just you know like you mentioned we're not just here doing our sport and nothing else you know we are out in the community doing things which i think is if not an even more important part of what we do mm -hmm. yeah for sure I know that Sadie can probably touch on that too, because I mean, she goes to a, we both went to the same school. It's a Christian college in Indiana. So I know that they probably are going to do a lot of like mission work or work in the community as well. Um, and that just really speaks on like the importance of who you are as a person rather than just an athlete, I think. Yeah, I agree. Um, so after college, I know you said you wanted to be a pilot. Is, are there any other opportunities in like rifle shooting past college that you would want to pursue or no? Yeah, so um, rifle shooting in the U.S., funny enough, is actually the professional route in the U.S. looks a little different than it does in other countries where it's a bigger sport, um, particularly in Europe. But here we have a few options um, that are linked to the military um, as kind of professional jobs. Um, being an athlete. And then there are some, you know, everybody kind of takes a different path that wants to continue shooting. Um, it is a goal of mine to um, compete and try for the Olympics in 2024. Oh, wow. And one of my goals, like I mentioned earlier, had been to get on the national team. Mm -hmm. And as of a few months ago, I did that. Oh, I actually competed in the national junior championship, which um, qualified me for a world championship in Cairo, Egypt. So um, I feel like for me, that's just like the first step into kind of the USA shooting realm um, national team, as opposed to our NCAA arena, because the two are, um, although they're similar, they're very different um, kind of stages and platforms within the, within the community. So that's a huge step for me. And I'm very excited to be able to do that. And I hope to continue that after college, um, whether it's through the military uh, or not. Um, but yeah, I would definitely like to continue shooting. So when, when are you going to Egypt? Um, I think the match is in October. Okay. Yeah. So I'll be traveling to Egypt sometime in October and it's going to be tight because our NCAA season starts by then. So mm. it'll be busy. Yeah, I'm sure. Wow. That's impressive though. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Say, do you got anything? No, no, she's doing great. I'm just listening. <laughs> All right. Um, so I had a couple more and then we can get to the fun questions. Um, so being a pilot, I know that you'd mentioned that your mom was a pilot or is a pilot and that's your goal to be a commercial pilot. I saw on your Instagram that you like were flying a plane or something. What, I guess it probably came from your mom, but like, what is that like <laughs> being a pilot and a college athlete? Um, I've had so much fun with it so far. Um, I'm really just like in awe and kind of just very proud of what she does. Mm -hmm. um, and I look up to her like so much in that. And I think that's a lot of the reason that I want to follow in what she's doing. Um, that and the fact that aviation is just, it, it just amazes me every time going out there and being able to fly this summer, I'm working on my private pilot license and being able to fly. It gives me like just this whole new perspective and ability to learn in a whole different way. Um, aside from school and aside from athletics and everything, which I really have enjoyed because um, during the year I get just saturated with all of that. Um, and again, like learning about something that you're so passionate about, it just brings like, it makes it so enjoyable and you learn so, so much um, just being able to see the principles and like, there's a lot of book learning and then there's a lot of flying. So being able to to draw the two together and see it happening in real time while you're flying. Oh yeah, this, 
this is how the plane is affected by this. And this is what's happening. Oh, this is what's happened when I make this mistake. And just like learning from those experiences and seeing how it all works to me is just, it's amazing. Yeah, for sure. Did you see the new Top, Top Gun movie? I have not. And everybody is kicking me for it. <laughs> I, I heard, I really need to see it. You've I think I've seen it three times, maybe four all in theaters. Like I just went back. It's Seven. so good. It's my top five. It's in my top five favorite movies of all time. I gotta, I gotta just, I gotta just go out and do it. How are you gonna be a pilot but haven't seen Top Gun? I know. I <laughs> the first one is amazing, and I the second one is better. It's better. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Wow. My one coach has been nagging on me for not going and seeing. You gotta that. go see it. It's so it's good. Great. It is. It's great. Yeah. Well, wow. now that I have, I have to add you guys to the list of people telling me. To see it. <laughs> <laughs> so now I really got to go. It's so good. Highly recommend. All right. I got one more question that we can hop into the fun questions. Um, so as I know that rifle probably doesn't get the same support as other Nebraska sports. Is there any way for Nebraska fans to support the team or like their home matches or. Yeah. So we actually have. I have to look at our schedule for this year, but we do have quite a bit of home matches every year, um, especially since COVID has changed. The first year that I was on the team, there was nothing happening because mm. um, that was peak COVID. But last year, last semester, we had home matches and we did have spectators come. It's um, our ranges in the Naval Science Building right next to the stadium mm -hmm. um, in the basement. And we set up a whole viewing area. Um, with screens so you guys can see the targets and there's usually food and breakfast and stuff there because we start pretty early in the morning um, but yeah people are welcome to come and stop in uh, our schedule can be found online on our website um, and if you come in and you know spectators are not allowed to like sit in the range while we're shooting mm -hmm. but if you just grab one of us and introduce yourself we're more than happy to take you in the range and show you um around after whatever um yeah so that's one way that you can support us and we're i think since we don't get a lot of support everybody is always looking for ways to connect with people we love mm -hmm. teaching mm -hmm. people about our sport and educating the public um on what we do mm -hmm. so yeah for sure all right well sadie you got any uh hot takes or fun questions this is sadie's thing she loves doing this part <laughs> Yeah, so I got some hot takes and fun questions. We'll just start off. We ask every like every athlete we interview this. Do you like Chipotle or Qdoba better or agave? Because that's been put into the mix oh. as well. If you put agave in there, then you're gonna knock the other two out, of course. Sponsor us agave. <laughs> I will agave. Try. You can't beat agave. It's just fresh. Okay. All right. Hmm. All right. We're gonna go between the other two yeah that's a little more difficult but agave is 100 percent. what what about chipotle kidoba which one of those two i think i have to go with kidoba oh i'm not i i think it depends on the chipotle that you go to the one that's right in lincoln i have not been a fan of hmm. okay that's Whatever interesting. Reason. but agave is the best Yes, agave, one hundred percent. What What's your go to? Do you get like a burrito or a bowl or tacos? I usually get either a bowl or a burrito with chicken, steak. Uh, it depends. I think the I like the pork. Okay. A lot at agave. If you haven't tried that, it's very good. Well, we don't live in Nebraska, so we can't even get agave. Oh my! God. Where are you from? Um, we're from Michigan, but I live in Virginia now and Sadie's in the DR right now, but she goes to school in Indiana. Oh, okay. I'm sorry about the central time thing. I thought you were in Nebraska. So I was no, no, no. like, I was like, I think they're in central time. <laughs> all right. It's all right. Um, um, I have yeah, another yeah. question. Here we go. Do you have a hidden talent? I haven't asked anybody this, but I think it'd be hilarious. Flying you have a plane. <laughs> A hidden talent. Yeah. And are you willing to expose it right now? <laughs> um, that's a hard one. 
I don't know if I have anything really crazy. Uh-huh. No, nothing hidden. I mean, I play the guitar. I play okay. piano. Okay. Um, I was homeschooled, so my whole life until I went to college. So to most people, my hidden talent is being able to socialize like a normal person. <laughs> Um, <laughs> that's hilarious. That I mean, so you probably couldn't tell I was homeschooled, or I hope no. not. No, I not tell at all. When that's I tell so people funny. that, it's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're normal. <laughs> that's funny. That is so funny. There's a lot of home people school, uh, homeschooled kids that went to our college. So, really, mm-hmm. yeah, all right. Let's see. Okay, here's the question. What is the worst song you have ever heard? Like, what song plays and you just absolutely are like, skip? I do not like the song. Like, personally, for me, every Drake song, I don't like to listen to pretty much anyone. I can agree with you on that. Yes. A lot of Justin Bieber stuff. Oh. Against okay. popular opinion, I... Like, his new stuff, his old stuff, or all of it? A lot. Eh, probably more, actually, his older stuff. Okay. okay that's fair that hannah montana error that was like very <laughs> i don't know i'm just not vibing with that right also right. i'm a huge country music person oh yeah so who's your go-to who's your go-to country artist oh that's tough um i mean i like a lot of uh i don't like a lot of mainstream country i mean i do but i listen to a lot of artists like Tyler Childers and mm-hmm. kind of cowboy country like Coulter Wall and stuff. Um, you, uh, I, play, I play a lot of it on the guitar. So okay, have you have you heard of Hardy before? Mm-hmm. I like him. Yeah, I like before. Hardy. Mm-hmm. I like Morgan Wallen, of course. Everybody likes Morgan Wallen. I don't. Mm-hmm. Yes. Really? <laughs> I don't like country music. <laughs> you like a couple country songs? I like um. Florida Georgia line. I like that. I don't know when you can't live with (laughs) that song is a banger. That might be in my top songs ever. (laughs) That was good. That's funny. That's my go-to country song. Yeah. Um, if you were in like a zombie apocalypse, and I'm guessing you'd want to be with some of your teammates because you guys can all obviously shoot. Which teammate, other than yourself, would you trust the most to handle the guns? And who wouldn't? You yeah, and who would you not trust to handle the guns? <laughs> mm, in a zombie apocalypse. Well, Maddie is, um, Madeline Erickson is one of my, she's like my best friend. But I feel like in a zombie apocalypse, giving her a gun. I don't know if I will get shot or if the zombies will get shot. <laughs> so, oh, no. someone that I would give the guns to, man, that's a hard choice. Depends on if I've pissed them off that day or not. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Um, Say, so do you got any more? Uh, of course, I always have more. Let's see. If you could be an animal, what animal would you be? Land and sea. Land and sea. Mm-hmm. Okay. In the ocean, I would be a killer whale. <sighs> Me too. Um, on land, probably a horse. Okay. Okay. Wait, why a killer whale? I'm a huge marine biology fan. So I just, I like them. I like studying them a lot. Yeah. Oh, they're very they're very interesting to me yeah i agree hmm. all right and they're pretty i mean they are pretty they're gorgeous but don't get yeah. in the water with them no <laughs> not violent <laughs> out of captivity they said killer in the name <laughs> the orca whales we called them killer whales Nathan. oh whatever okay um so oh i had a good one um oh yeah so is it true that you guys beat army in a rifle yes. contest? That's kind of scary. Yep, we beat 
uh, I know at least one of the two years we've shot against them that I've been here, we beat them. It was probably this year. That's kind of scary. <laughs> I feel like they should yeah. win it every year. <laughs> depends on the academy that you shoot against. Air Force is pretty good. Army depends on the year. But I mean, our girls are our girls are pretty good. So, so I what wanna, I'm hearing I is I wouldn't want to mess with them. So what I'm hearing is, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for the loudness of the Dominican Republic. <laughs> and when they talk, they yell. I'm so sorry. <laughs> But um, what I'm hearing is, if we have another world war, I'm coming to Nebraska. Mm-hmm. I'm finding some of your teammates, and I'm going to stay alive. Yes. All right. There we, we go. Don't, we just need you. <laughs> yeah, no, no army, just, just the Nebraska rifle team. That's the, new, that's the new Nebraska slogan. We don't need the army. We just need us. There it is. <laughs> Make a sticker. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh, all right um have you seen the movie american sniper yes i love that movie okay in that movie i think i remember him saying like when you shoot you're supposed to <clears throat> breathe in and then on your exhales when you're supposed to shoot um mm-hmm. is that true advice i think that's a classic thing that people say and also i think it depends on the shooting that you're doing um what they're doing is a lot different than what we're doing um Yes, you're in your exhale. Um, So when we shoot, we're inhaling and exhaling kind of at a shallow but natural rate. Um, Before we take the shot, we're exhaling. And then when we take the shot, I would say that 90% of people seal their breath at a natural Mm. pause. So they're not actively releasing that air, but it is in the exhale portion of Mm. their breath. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Good to know. It's kind of about yeah creating that natural pause um because otherwise your body is moving with that air um so we're trying to eliminate that movement when we take the shot interesting and are you are you um do you shoot bow and arrows too like have you ever do you i have i don't Mm -hmm. compete um but i have yeah okay hey can you rate my gun that i have that i carry Tell me if it's sure. a good gun. Okay. Um, well, I just need to know from an expert, Sadie. Don't give me that look. I'm not an, uh, I don't claim to be an expert in all firearms. I mean, I know what I shoot. I can give you my best, my best estimate, but. Okay. So I use, I mean, I don't like really carry that often or anything, but it's a Smith & Wesson M&P Shield Plus. Okay. I've heard a lot of people say they really like that gun though. Okay, good. The M&P Shield and Smith and Wessons are nice. So, I mean, I've shot, I don't know if I've shot the MP, but I have shot some Smith and Wesson guns and I have liked them. So I wouldn't be opposed to buying one myself Good to know. if I was looking for a gun. Good to know. Sweet. All right, say what you got. Um, I'm trying to find this picture of when I was shooting a gun once and my accuracy. Here it is. I don't know if you'll be able to see. Can you see all my whole? All oh, yeah, holes? I can see it. I can see it. Is that pretty good? That looks pretty good to me. I mean, they're in the black. Oh, I love God. your caption. Pew, going pew. For. <laughs> yeah, my caption. Pew, pew. If it's in the black all day, that's good. I missed one right. Oh, whoops. I missed one right there. But hey. Uh, I can't see that. Oh, good. Then it's yeah. not that. <laughs> but I'm I kidding. Can't see that. I can't. I can't see those. I just see the ones in the black. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty proud of myself. I'm pretty sure our uncle lives in Nebraska, and he he's a little um, gun safety is not a thing with him. So <laughs> we were literally one time walking, and he's like he had like an uh, like a literal automatic like AK-47. We were just walking. He's just start boom shoots it straight up in the air. I was like eight, hey, scarred for life. Yeah, <laughs> it's so fun. He, yeah, he's he's wild. He's like he's like shouldn't be alive is what I'm like. He shouldn't be alive right now. There's, I don't know how he's just cheating death right now. We all know some people like that. <laughs> yeah. All right. What is um 
what is like the craziest piloting or shooting story that you have? Piloting or shooting story. Um, let's see. Well, I have, I have coincidental story with shooting. Don't have anything like crazy interesting. Um, piloting, so this is kind of interesting. While we're flying, we're doing training. Uh, we do like a lot of emergency maneuvers training. So when you first learn, especially, that's like, you have to know how to get out of any emergency situation and basically fly the plane with no power, you know, if your engine quits. Um, and in all these different situations. So when we're training, we actually, you know, we'll shut off the engine, we'll pull power and we'll do those kinds of maneuvers in the air. Obviously it's, you're expecting it. So you are learning how to handle it. Um, but we'll actually do that. And, um, a couple of times. So when you power the plane off, especially at a slow speed, you lose a lot of maneuverability with the plane because you don't have as much air flowing over the wings. So it's easy to stall the plane and drop into a spin, um, especially if you have, you know, windy conditions. And we were doing that one day um, and we had cut power to the engine. We were in um, practicing stall. So we were bringing the plane to a full stall in the air um, where it would break and fall. And then we would recover from that fall. And one of our wings actually stalled ahead of the other. So the plane went into a partial um, spin and we were able to recover it before we went into a full spin. Um, but that was kind of a, like a realization moment for me of like, yeah, I really need to know how to handle this on my own if it actually happens. Cause yeah. we're just like, you know, we're just messing around and training here and, you know, we have it under control, but if it actually happens, it's pretty, you know, it gets your heart going, even though I was half expecting that to happen. Um, but you don't think about those things happening. That's crazy. So breaking your back, shooting guns, and having planes die on you on purpose. Sounds like a safe life. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm a little bit of an adrenaline junkie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. All right. Um, we got time just for like one or two more. Say, do you have anything or no? No, I do not. So you can go right. ahead and get it with the last one. Okay. So this is the last question we ask everybody. Um, what is a piece of life advice you could give to people and something you want to tell Nebraska fans? So I think the biggest thing for me in life is never underestimate your potential and never let other people define who you are, or who you want to be. Don't let other people's limitations become your own limitations just because your friend group or your friends are doing a certain thing or following a certain path um, that shouldn't limit who you want to become. Um, and something I've had to learn in life is that if that is becoming a limiting factor, then it's okay to, to separate that in your life and say, Hey, these people are not, this is not encouraging me. This is not getting me to where I ultimately need to be. Um, and that's okay. And kind of learning to deal with that and then push push me for myself and do it myself because in the end I've learned that no one's going to do it for you and no one is always going to be there telling you you can do it so it's really important for me when I talk to kids and other athletes to be like yeah you can do it go for it and empower them in that way because if someone has the idea in their head that they can go for it and they can do it they will that's the first step that was my first step. Someone told me, yes, this is possible. And in my head that, that there was no question. Yes, I can do this. I will do it. So I feel like putting that first step in their mind is just opening a whole door of opportunity, no matter where they want to go in life. Um, so just it's cliche, but telling people to follow their dreams and really don't hold that back because you think it's different or or because it's a dream, um, because everything that I've accomplished so far was a dream. Um, and that should just be a testament to what anybody can do. It's not just me, it's, it's anybody, because 
I'm a nobody, but people think I'm a somebody because of what I'm doing. But that could be anybody on the street. So just really kind of looking inside yourself and realizing that it doesn't matter where you are now. It just matters where you want to be and then what you're going to do to get there. Um, And as far as Nebraska goes, I can only say good things for the support from our athletics department, the school, and then all of our fan base um, that support us and constantly give back to our, to our organization. And um, I just want everybody to know that I'm constantly trying to find ways to give back to, to those fans and to those people around us. Um, and to educate and uplift so that other people have the same opportunities that I have because anybody could be in my position and all the things that I've been given or worked for can be someone else's and I want them to be. I want everybody to have that experience. Um, So I think that's, that's really just a huge part of this whole, this whole operation. Sweet. Yeah. Well, I think